So here's the garden I volunteer at. They're all raised bed. These um, were actually donated by the Kansas City Garden Club. And the soil is probably about three inches deep. It's all imported um, composted dirt. It's supposed to be all organic. And uh, these are all fairly productive. They do have some issues that we'll talk about. So here, so here is my main garden bed. It's about 14 feet long, 4 feet wide. I made it a little bit wider than I probably should have. I can't quite reach the middle once stuff has grown up all big and tall. Um, so that was not ideal. This is a very fertile one. We got most of the stuff growing out of this. It's um, only about a year old, so there's still quite a bit of clay left from the first time I turned it over and uh, took the grass off. This is one that's been here since the house has been here. And it gets a lot of shade, but uh, tomatoes do surprisingly well. And of course the parsley that survives all winter. There's a rain barrel. This uh, is just a homemade little thing where I planted a, an apple tree. I don't know if that survived, but there are two more here, so I guess natural selection will do the rest of the work. And then here is my other bed. I just put this one in last summer. And this one I, I haven't tilled. I just took the grass off, so it's pretty firm right now. Frost is doing all the work, and we'll see. But it, it stuff grew fairly well in it. Um, it didn't quite get as developed as in the other bed. I think because the roots weren't able to penetrate into the soil well enough. And so, but the dirt here is pretty good. <clears throat> Here's one of the raised beds that I have for planting. Uh, blueberries and strawberries. The blueberries haven't done so well. There used to be one right here um, and it dried up and died so I pulled it out. And th here's another one and it's about four years old and it's it's not doing very well. The strawberries do okay. They have periods where they die and look like they're gonna you know just go away forever but then they come back. So. And here are the two square foot gardens, and these have a lot of shade, so they don't do well for much of anything. Get some borage out of them, and some parsley, and chives, and that's pretty much all that'll grow here. The weeds in them get pretty bad, and you can probably see right here, got some dandelions that have been surviving the winter. Um, so weeding these can be a problem though, and also, soil tends to, uh, after a while it compacts and comes out from underneath the edges and it pushes the frame of the garden up. And then here's one I just put in last year. Um, I just made this frame out of some old uh, fencing wood that we had for a privacy fence. I put potatoes and beans in this. The potatoes didn't do very well. I'm hoping that this year it'll, everything will be more composted and um, the compost ratio was really uh, high last year so I don't think that the roots were able to get a good uh, bond with the soil. And the only thing that this one has is water comes down from the slope and it'll catch up against the edge of this and pool. Um, but that does keep the inside from getting completely saturated. But this is generally a wet area. And then this is the oldest raised bed that I have. We put this in probably about four years ago. And it um, it's just these little landscaping timbers. They're um, supposed to be, they're from 4x4s, four but they're probably more like you know, three inches, three and a half inches thick. 
And this one does okay. It gets a little bit of shade from the south, so you know, it's it's a little bit iffy compared to those other two that I showed you that were actually in the ground. And uh, it generally, you know, after four years the soil starts looking real nice. And uh, don't have to do a lot of weeding over here. Um, especially once it gets mid late summer, the weeds just don't grow, especially if you put on a um, thick layer of compost. And here is the final garden space. This is inside of a frame where I can put plastic up for a greenhouse during the winter. This winter, unfortunately, the uh, I was using Velcro and the cold did something and caused the Velcro to not stay attached to the um, to the metal frame very well and so I'll have to find another alternative next year but I had kale in here and it survived you can still see some remnants of it but it survived fairly well inside of the uh, the plastic but as soon as the you know plastic started coming off it didn't stand a chance and then here are my two compost bins these are uh, they're supposed to be 4x4, four four. they're probably more like 4x3, four, four feet tall, 3 inches um, square. And these, this is basically uh, plywood, if I use both hands. It, it just slides up, so whenever I need to, I can get the compost out. It's good generally to uh, keep it as um, as much in a core as you can so that the heat and the bacteria will stay toward the center and slowly be able to move their way up. Um, and the sides are open so that oxygen can get in because it's supposed to emulate a natural pile. If those were just closed, no oxygen would be able to get in and the uh, bacteria would not be able to thrive as well. I could probably put some more in this. When I filled it up this fall, it was uh, all the way to the top and it, it sunk down pretty well. This will probably be what I mulch with this, this upcoming spring and summer. And here's the last compost pile. This is just for kitchen scraps. It's got the same idea. Um, of course, this wood is not painted, so it's stuck in there pretty well, but once the temperatures get warmer, um, this just slides off and I can take the uh, compost out. It, it hasn't been turned yet. I probably won't be able to use any of this until uh, late in this upcoming year because it uh, isn't very well composted yet. And it's, it's winter here right now, so nothing's going to go on with it for a while. Here's a cold frame. It basically works like a clutch on the inside um, during the winter. You keep it all closed up and this only really works the way I have it set up in a garden that's in the ground and not raised bed because I don't water this and so it gets water from underground which behind me is what I call a swale. The water comes from uphill down through here like a little stream and it pools up and the water table stays fa fairly high down here so we get a lot of water that comes right in don't have to water anything that's in the ground and so this the water comes straight out of the ground don't have to water this during the winter um, what I had in here was just radish it's fairly hardy I thought it would survive fairly well but um, it looks like I didn't have a very good enough seal actually it looks a little bit wilted so maybe it did survive and then um, it got too hot and I needed to vent it. But there's at least one radish that made it to full maturity. It doesn't look like any of these went to seed though, so they died before they uh, were all the way through their life cycle. So uh, in conclusion, I generally tend to think that traditional uh, in the ground garden where you just, you know, take a shovel, take the grass off, 
and dig a hole basically are better than raised bed. Uh, I, I grew up with raised bed gardens and I generally realize that they tend to dry out pretty fast. And the things that I showed you when I was walking around the gardens I have, um, not the one I volunteer at, those, I don't water those. I probably water them uh, once a week, maybe not even that, and I try to use the rain barrels for most of it. Um, so the, the garden that's in the ground can draw water from the groundwater. The roots of the grass uh, help trap water and the clay. It, it generally keeps the moisture content high in the ground as opposed to raised bed where it's lifted up above the, gr the ground level and they, they tend to dry out. The raised beds uh, do help prevent grass from expanding into the garden, but honestly, I've had grass grow up in raised bed gardens constantly. It really is just a function of how long they've been in the same place. Grass will grow up in them, and once a raised bed gets completely overgrown with weeds, if it gets to that point, like if you leave it for a year, it can be impossible to take care of. You have to take it out and um, basically rototill. The um, one advantage of a raised bed is that, in theory, uh, it helps block roots from underground, which, like I just said, isn't always the case. And so it keeps that root space for your plants. Um, and you shouldn't have to till. You can just compost heavily and it will help keep the weeds down. That's true whenever you garden though. Doesn't matter if it's a raised bed or just traditional in the ground plot. So I, I think the main advantage that I see for raised bed is that it's organized, it's neat, it's tidy, it looks nice, um, and it's easy to just sort of keep it looking clean. Now, personally, it's more expensive. You have to buy a lot of dirt to fill it up. You have to buy a wood frame, and the wood frames do rot. Um, you're not supposed to get treated lumber. That's a big no-no, especially for an organic garden. And, um, you know, there is an issue of erosion if they get overfilled, especially if you don't use uh, really degraded compost. The main drawback I would see of a raised bed is um, the water consumption. If you, They can have a higher yield if you're watering them constantly, but you know, truly sustainable gardening isn't going to allow you to just pour gallons and gallons and gallons of water when we know that a large percentage of that water is just evaporating back into the atmosphere, running off in the surface, or going to, into the ground. It's not even being taken up by the roots. The only instance where I would recommend raised bed would be in a rocky area or the desert or an area that has really, really poor soil. Um, even then, I, th I think I would generally tend to stray toward just go out, dig, dig a hole, basically. You don't even have to dig a hole, just chop off the grass by taking your shovel and slicing off the first couple inches of layer and uh, most of the United States has soil good enough for putting a garden in the ground and if you don't you should look at raised bed and not just raised bed but raised bed where you're irrigating with um, a rain barrel or maybe look at aquaponics which you can do indoors that would be a good alternative because um, it can be powered using solar power which is more readily available out in the desert than it is maybe here in the Midwest. So um, that's just my personal experience. I have a neighbor who's been gardening for, you know, 20 plus years. He's only ever used gardens that are in the ground, ground contact, and he's been very successful.